I just want to congratulate everybody for able to make it to a morning judo class. It's nothing really that makes you feel more alive in the morning uh, than judo. So, can I see how many people were in my last class here? All right, so most people, good. Uh, so I'm going to be kind of talking about similar principles uh, as I was doing in my last class. Uh, how I'm translating my old judo game into my jiu-jitsu game. And in last class we were doing the tai toshi, which was my easiest throw to translate into the gi. But with the no gi game, I had a little bit harder time, uh, but the Uchimara became uh, a very good throw to do in the Noki, and uh, you can see it uh, in many Noki tournaments and even in uh, uh, UFC, for example, Ronda Rose uh, cheated a few of these throws always uh, in her career. However, that ended up as. Uh, if you have you over here. So, Uchimara. Uh, it's basically Japanese for inner thigh throw. It's a quite a technical throw, so don't feel bad if you won't be able to get the uh, basic throw. But I'm gonna try to make it uh, easier as we go on, and give you some uh, tips and some small tricks to make it uh, easier and easier. Okay, so just in the basics, so you can see what we're gonna be doing today, is the throw itself, uh, originally we have the gi, and I'm stepping inside, and then I'm throwing with my foot, going between, and throwing over here. Okay, today we're going to be looking over having the underhook and overhook, throwing in both positions. All right, and it's basically just stepping in here, we're going to be throwing over, uh, over using the hip. Okay, so before we go straight into it, because this is a little bit bigger throw than what we were doing in last class, I don't want to be throwing the entire time. Because this is a, a bigger throw, you're just going to wear yourself out um, straight away. So I want to break it down into sections and uh, kind of do some easier drills to get the technique. Because the technique in this throw is very important and you can't really muscle yourself through it. So, uh, we're going to try to partner up with people of similar size. That is like a similar weight at least. And uh, that is going to be kind of important for this throw because it's going to be a lot harder for a smaller person to practice technique on a heavier person. Alright? So, the first drill that we're going to do. Uh, with the underhook, <coughs> because I was talking about distance between hips. Uh, in the earlier class. So one of the biggest issues that we have with judo and jiu-jitsu is our hips are always so far away and many of the judo throws are involving the hips getting close to the other hip to generate a lot of power. So with the underhook and decent posture we have our hips pretty close together already. So to uh, train the hips and the feet, we're going to start with the underhook and let's have, uh, you can either have a high underhook grabbing over the shoulders or the lat over here, okay? So I'm going to grab around the wrist, grab the uh, fingers just like so, this is uh, the power of the grip and my foot is going to step in between, and the other foot is going to step over here. All right, so I have foot, 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 foot. So I'm not standing in between, I'm not standing right in front, I'm standing so we're having feet in all the space. Make sense? All right, so come here, and I just want to drop my base, and I'm going to lift him up onto my hips, just like so. Just want to start by lifting my partner onto my hips because in the essence I'm going to be using my hips not my 
feet to throw him. So I really want you guys to feel that. Just stepping in here, stepping outside, down, lift. Boom. Just again. My foot is in the middle of him. I don't want to push my hip over to the side. Then I'm going into a hip throw. Uchi Uchimara. I'm going to have having my hip and my leg really like my thigh is right in between his feet. Here, boom, boom. Okay, so loading him in front of me. If I don't want to go backwards, I'm going to load him onto me. All right, let's try it out. One, two, three. Now I'm going to do the same drill, just a little bit harder. Now I have to load it onto one leg. So this is all really about balancing uh, on a single leg. So one of the uh, most common mistakes when people go in for the Uchimara is that they go backwards. So now we're gonna do the same drill. I'm gonna step in. When I lift him up, I'm gonna lean over this leg. Just gonna do this. So I'm able to take him onto my hip, onto one leg. I don't need to stand there for too long. I just need to feel like I have him on one leg. Here, boom, boom, lift them up. Seems simple enough, right? Just put your body and loading the hips onto one leg. All right, try it out. Yeah, so one, two, three. So let's bring it in. All right, so any questions so far? It looked pretty good. Uh, like I said, don't worry if you don't get it straight away. Uh, this is a very technical throw and I am going to kind of be cheating the more we go on. Like I'm gonna make it like, okay, like first I'm gonna teach you the basics because you really kind of want to know the basics before you start cheating. That's always how it is, right? Yeah, exactly. So, uh, now we're going to add the leg kick, basically going for the throw itself. All right, we're going to keep still the uh, underhook and I'm going to take my leg and I'm just going to go up. <coughs> my, um, how my leg goes up, it's different how people like to teach it. Uh, the easiest way to teach it is to have ballerina legs when you go up. So when you go up, you have the ballerina legs because you want your entire leg to be straight. Like this. And then you can go a bit higher up as well. Personally, I like to lead with my heel. Then uh, all the muscles are tense, but it's about preference. And I recommend you guys to do the ballerinas. So when you go back, just have your toe pointing up and try not to kick up too much. You want to have a straight leg, okay? So, <clears throat> when my leg is going between, it's, uh, it's called an inner thigh throw. It's not called a crotch throw. So I'm going like right in the inner thigh, like just on the side. Yeah, I kind of want to go like almost to the top, but well, not really. Uh, you might have to do this, like uh, we'll probably have two rounds of this to really like feel the spot because this is kind of like a, you can either feel it or not. Um, and soon as you get it once, you're like, oh, okay, yeah, that's the spot. Uh, so it might be a bit clunky and all you can really do to get good at this throw is repetition. Just right, repetition, repetition, repetition. And this is how you get good at the basic throw that you see 
in uh, the Judo Olympics where you see people throwing them over like a uh, head over heel. It's like one of the most spectacular throws that you'll see in uh, Judo competition. But <clears throat> what we're gonna do, we're gonna keep our underhook over here, we're gonna have our wrist control, and now I need to make sure that I'm going to be pulling as well. So, looking at the feet first. I'm stepping like we're doing, stepping on the inside, outside, and lifting. So, it's very hard to show it in slow motion, but I'll try my absolute best. So, we're coming in here, and now I'm lifting, and... Oh. Sorry. Alright. Birkin is going to be kind of heavier than usual. So, now I'm lifting, and I'm going to be lifting my leg up here. So right around here is where the breaking point is, and I just pull him, and that's it. So, looking at the hands now, I am pulling them down. I don't want to leave my body uh, behind. I don't want to be throwing like here and hurt my shoulder. The shoulder should be in a strong position. So when I go in, the shoulder is pushing him to the side. His posture should be broken, not mine. So if he is trying to get up now, it's much harder for him than me keeping him down. If we go up, and now I try to break him down, he could break my shoulder if I just go too hard in. So I'm gonna use this one as well to help it out. So I'm pulling like this. All right. So together, stepping in, stepping out, pulling, 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 and throwing. Uh, yeah. So we're just gonna try it out, um, and then we'll do some troubleshooting afterwards. Uh, and like I said, don't worry if you won't get the throw straight away. Um, Sometimes, most often times, it will look a little bit more kind of like this in the beginning. But that's okay. In Jiu Jitsu, this is two points. So it doesn't really matter. You got him down. So, uh, yeah, that's fine. Uh, any questions before we start? No? Let's just try it out then. One, two, three. Sure, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, consider me impressed. It was looking very good. Uh, any questions? Yeah? True. I feel like she falls on my leg. Like she falls on his leg normal. Okay, so uh, with the position of the leg, Uchimara is the inner thigh right here. I come from a very untraditional judo school. My judo teacher was a sailor who wasn't really good at teaching us the words for it. He would just teach us whatever worked. And uh, yeah, it didn't like really teach us the words. But if I'm going far down here, it's a, another throw, but it does work. Also, instead of going here, I can go to the other side, or I can even go over here. Like there's four throws going on to the Shin, thigh, thigh, shin. Four different throws. So if you're going over here and going down low, it works as well. It's just a little bit different throw technically, but uh, it can work. I think I'm doing it on the inner thigh. But yes. When she falls, uh -huh. she falls on my leg that's standing on the ground, and she, she touches it, and maybe she, she does, or I don't know if it's going to happen like this. So she's landing on your leg. Kind of, like she's falling and kind of touching the back. Landing on the leg that you're standing in. Uh, I'm not quite sure how that will happen. Okay, wait. Okay. Any other questions? Yeah. So I've normally found that when I'm wrestling or doing jiu jitsu, that I get the uchimata off of um, 
of the wizard. So yes. Over -hook rather than an underhook, and the underhook's more for setting up like the gauches and our gauches and stuff. Yeah. So, about the overhook, uh, like I said in the beginning of the class, we're gonna actually move on to the overhook as soon as we finish this, uh, the underhook. Uh, most of the time I have it with a visor or an overhook, uh, but I want to teach the underhook first because then it's easier to teach the hip parts because that is the biggest part of the throw. So you need to know that before we move on. Um, I want to show two ways uh, of helping to finish the throw off if you uh, are in the position and just don't have that extra power to finish it off or just the balance is a bit off uh, or for example my partner is very flexible that happens a lot uh, if your partner is taller than you or more flexible than you and he can just lift their legs like all into the air and doesn't matter how hard you go in here. So, <clears throat> what ends up ha happening is, I'm in here, and I'll have to go up, I know. And we get stuck in this position. I'm trying to like get him down, but he's just like too uh, stable and too flexible to really like be able to, uh, for me to use the hip throw him over. Okay? So, there's, um, I talked in my last class about the whirlpool. That we want to move our energy kind of closer and closer to the center. So, here, oftentimes we'll start jumping in a circle. And if we jump, just jump in a circle, we'll just keep on going. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna jump into a smaller and smaller circle. So now I'm going to be in a much smaller area instead of going into a big one. So the difference, just by jumping closer over here, then I get closer and closer underneath, uh, I get my hips underneath him. So I'm not sure if you're able to see it, but here, my hips are quite far away from him. When I start stepping closer, my hips get closer, closer, and then we just kind of collapse together. This actually is a less violent often time when we get into it. One other tip, I already mentioned it to a few other people, is what we call the horse kick. And that's when people go with their legs like this. So you go in and your feet are still kind of bent. And all you have to do is really kick it out. So just boom. Kind of like a bad uh, Chuck Norris movie. Oh, oh, good Chuck Norris movie. So we just basically go in here and I'm stuck with my leg like this. And few people were having this, so you can see how our legs are kind of stuck together. So, if I have my leg bent, it's kind of like I'm a knot. Just by kicking it out, it throws them over. All right? One more time. So, we're kind of stuck like this. All I have to do is kick them out. And we can combine them actually. So we can go over here, when I go in my circle, I can start to. I'm gonna show you without him. So when I go into a circle, I start to kind of kick him out, just like that. And yes, I do that in the dance move. All right. So we have going into the whirlpool, closer, closer, closer. We have the horse kick, bum, and then we have combining it. We go boom, boom, boom. All right, let's try it out before we move over to the visor. One, two, three. Look 
looking good. So, before we move on to the uh, visor. So, we have done kind of the bigger throw. Now we're going to go into turning it into more of a trip and uh, a little bit of uh, smaller, smaller throw that I actually have uh, easier time hitting. But before we, before we move on, any questions about this one? Uh, does this move work on your opponents a lot taller than you? Yes, it does. Uh, is anybody? You're pretty tall, right? I can never see you when you're sitting. So, <laughs> yeah, perfect. So, if your opponent is taller than you, there are versions that will work better or worse. All right. So. If I have it over here and I just go and do the basic throw, you don't mind, right? Yeah. So if I pull him up here, like I'm not flexible enough, just be able to get him. That's when I really need to use my hip. So when I use my hip underneath him and just bend a little bit, because if I'm over here, I don't have much power, or when I go underneath him, then I have a lot of power. So when I go underneath him, boom, boom, and have my hip a bit lower down, but my butt cheek is kind of right here, so I just moved my connection point higher up. I can go and throw it. So it really is just the hip to hip. It is a bit harder though. Like, yes. I mean, Birgir here, uh, he is as quite tight. Uh, for example, hips. So oftentimes uh, it can be easier to throw people with uh, tighter hips. If you are training with like Taekwondo guys that can uh, kick into there, then you really need to do that move over here where you get your butt cheek into the into the right place and you're using your hip to throw him instead of just your leg. Make sense? All right. Thanks. Other questions? Yes. Yeah. Is there kind of an easy way to get some help? Because I have an inspiring experience that they're going to block the hips and you can't get any. Yeah. So, easy way to get the underhook. Uh, short answer no. Uh, but I believe that we have a wrestling class today. And he's going to be doing some um, uh, upper. Uh, body stuff with wrestling, and he's probably gonna give you a best, better answer than I can uh, with that. What I'm going to go into now is the visor because people want those underhooks. Uh, so in judo, I really like having like these. Like I, I'm a pretty basic. I like my basic grips. Uh, and that can translate easily to over-under. So for me personally, over-under is a very nice position, but when they are always going for the underhook, the visor or the overhook is just right there. And you can't get stuck in the thought that if you have an underhook, you're safe. Because if you have a good overhook, you can actually put a lot of pressure on your opponent and you can get a lot of control out of it. So, just looking at the overhook uh, for the start is if he goes in and if he has like a deep underhook and it's going all the way over here, he has a better position really than me and he has the inside uh, hat position. But if I take my uh, hook here, I go and I go high up. If I have the gi, I take the opposite side and I can feed it in and I can really get that uh, uh, posture broken with a good deep overhook. Okay? So, with my overhook, I'm gonna have it high up and then my uh, pressure is gonna come a lot from the shoulder, pushing him down like this. So, Pitti, you have the underhook. Do you feel you have a good grip? Yeah. So, I'm able to make it a fair fight. Uh, I really like being able to throw with underhooks 
as well as overhooks. I don't want to be helpless when my opponents have the underhooks. So getting good at the viscer or the overhook is very key. And for a judo player, it's actually not that hard. So with a good uh, overhook, putting pressure and getting some control from it, I'm gonna still have my wrist and because I have the overhook, my hips are not going to be able to get as close this time. So when I'm stepping in, my hips are not as far in because now you can see my posture is kind of just broken off. Yeah. So my hip is going to be a little bit more on the outside. When I'm lifting him up, it's basically just the same. Here, boom, boom. So for a taller person, doing it against a taller person is going to be a little bit harder, but we all, of course, have some tricks for that. So just for the start, we're going to do exactly the same, just with the overhook. So we're stepping in here, boom, boom. Keeping everything uh, in mind that we were doing earlier, only that the hip is not going to be able to do as much and the shoulder and the hands are going to be really important to control him into the ground. Because if I don't do that, he's just going to be up here, we're not going to go anywhere. If I steer him into the ground, I'm turning as well, always looking at the clock, we always say in, uh, in judo, looking at the clock. And going with our hands. In competition, of course, you just go with him without uh, losing control, really. You guys want to see it again? Or good? One more time. There you go. Having an overhook, wrist, come pulling him. Boom, boom, here. Yeah, try it out. Then I'll give you some nice tricks to make it super easy. All right, one, two, three. <laughs> All right, so now we've been struggling for about 30 minutes with this. Oh, not struggling actually, uh, you guys have been, uh, been doing way better than. Uh, than uh, Previously. Yeah, then previously, exactly. Then I had hoped, actually. Uh, that, that's super good. Uh, so, now I want to make it, make it even easier. And that is actually from a harder position, because in Gi, we have the sleeve grip. And that is kind of how this throw is developed. Getting that uh, torque in the upper body, getting the control from the upper body. Holding this grip, is easier said than done, holding the wrist control. So oftentimes, he'll be able to kind of like, we are in this position here, where he has his underhook, I have my overhook, and we are fighting for the grips on this side. I grab him, he breaks it, we're kind of going back and forth. So I don't have that wrist control. So if I don't have that wrist control, I really don't have that twist in the upper body that uh, we've been kind of needing for uh, most, of, most of the time. So, if I don't have this hand over here, we can do uh, some other uh, tricks, a little bit smaller ones. And it's not going to be a big throw as well. So, I'm keeping my uh, shoulder heavy. <coughs> and when I'm going in, just going to do the same with the step. Stepping between his leg, no here. Because I'm not grabbing anything, I can actually use this hand to put it on the ground for better uh, balance. So I can go. Yeah. He's not going to <laughs> fall this time. So, okay. so I can go actually down here. Go back, back, back. So I can use this hand. It's going to give me that extra power to really like push him up. Okay, but 
he also has his hand on the ground. So if he postures down, he kind of just stuck over here. What I can do, I can actually just push him into a hand that he's uh, posturing on. So when I go in here, I go and then I just push him into that hand. So it's going to collapse and oftentimes we'll have a half guard. But even if it's not the prettiest throw, still two points, right? In Jiu Jitsu, all takes downs are equal. Most important lesson for a Judogan, all takedowns are equals <coughs> in Jiu Jitsu. So, that is one version. Uh, sorry, not holding the wrist, going in here, here up, and then pushing in. And I'm basically just keeping it here, and then I'm gonna fall straight <coughs> there. All right? Another one that is really uh, for wrestlers oriented uh, is the ankle pick. I can do in the exact position, just coming down here, and then I can go for the ankle pick. So we're going in, boom. lifting up, and then just shooting straight for the ankle. Yeah? Third one, where I, I'm not much of an ankle pick guy, but there's some great people in my gym that do that a lot. <coughs> I like to go up here, and when I can't get him down, I'm gonna take the leg out and around. So I'm gonna trip his last leg standing. So, coming here, boom, lifting, and tripping. Yeah, so we're just gonna gently crumbling into the ground. And I want to constantly, whatever uh, version that you prefer, I'm always moving into him, pushing, 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 and gonna get into the position. Keeping that overhook can help you flatten him, flatten him out. Getting into a nice side control, or sometimes, you know, half guard, and keeping that still uh, grip until you're ready to move on. All right? Yeah, so we have about 10 minutes left, so let's try it out before uh, we're done for the day. Uh, yeah, let's see how it goes. One, two, three. So guys, any questions about the last techniques we were doing? Like I said, it was like throwing three out there, but uh, it kind of just falls in with the other ones. And if you want to uh, go and get some like decent takedowns with it, I recommend doing the repetition. That's the only way to get good at takedowns. Really, like whether it's judo, wrestling, or just like, just call it jujitsu takedowns. Like you need repetitions to be uh, uh, good at them. And then as soon as you start hitting him, uh, rolling, and it's gonna like feel, it's a special feeling when you get that perfect takedown. Uh, so any questions about the last techniques? See, what uh, kind of uh, ground positions do you end up in? Uh, which ground position do I end up in uh, Uchimara? Um, half guard or side control. That is, so because I'm throwing my leg in between, I'm oftentimes landing in the half guard, like, uh, yeah, you can imagine how, but usually I'm able to clear the leg and get into side control if I get a good one. But uh, oftentimes when we do the uh, one that we're throwing in, in the end, we're pushing in here, we get in this position and he has and like he starts crawling up straight away. And this is a very common position. Else? Okay, uh, so just for some setups, people ask me how to set it up. Um, we're not gonna drill it, I just want to point it out. Like this position already is quite common, but it's very nice to be kind of uh, doing some sweeps. Uh, going into putting over here, and you can make him basically step. If I have some wrist control, 
pulling over my leg and it snaps. I can go around. All these moves to make him re-step is going to open up the throw. So when you want to go combo it together, combo it with something that makes him like just move around. That's all you need to do is just make him move around a bit and then you'll find the opening. All right, so that is, uh, that is it for me today. Uh, I would just like to thank you guys again for being the brave ones to show up for our judo morning class. And uh, yeah, hopefully you'll be able to use uh, some of it later on. Uh, and just hopefully you can see as well, you know, kind of bridging the gap uh, between techniques of different, uh, different styles. It's not impossible, even though you just need to, you know, adapt a few things. All right, otherwise, thank you guys.